Now, you know, truth be told, there aren't that many animes out there that last very long in terms of captivating the audience and presenting a suitable enough story that everyone can universally enjoy, but after watching My Hero Academia Season 3 Episode 49 entitled One For All, I think that without a shadow of a doubt, if this episode didn't break that mold, then I personally don't know what will. What is going on, My Hero Academia fans? Welcome to My Hero Academia Season 3 Episode 49 review entitled One For All, which is indeed the final battle between All Might and All For One in a destroyed city within an environment to where the entire world is watching. And I will say, this episode within the entirety of My Hero Academia is without a shadow of a doubt one of the best episodes that was ever produced within the My Hero Academia franchise. Now, one of the many reasons for that, I do believe personally, is the interesting dynamic that we see between All Might and All For One. Now, All For One as a character, if you haven't seen the previous episodes prior to episode 49, is a very intriguing person, especially when trying to figure out his motives and determining what kind of quirks he has that can really put All Might in a very helpless position as he did in this episode, I really did enjoy the dynamic that All Might had in this episode when he fought up against All For One, because in this episode we truly get to see the willpower and the limits that All Might is willing to break in order to succeed in his quest in protecting the people that he loves, I really did enjoy how the dynamic between All For One killing All Might's master came into play, I really enjoyed the dynamic of seeing how All Might was basically exposed to the world in being this very skinny, shallow person as opposed to being the muscular hero that the entire world knows, I really do enjoy how the entire world basically accepted All Might for being who he was and accepting the fact that All Might is the only person at this given point that can go up against such a powerful adversary, I really did enjoy how the world was basically cheering on All Might in his battle against All For One because let's be realistic here, All For One is without a shadow of a doubt more powerful than Shigaraki, more more powerful than Nomu, he was, if anything, All Might's greatest opposition. And by the end of this episode, I truly did enjoy how the spark that All Might had within him has basically vanished in the fact that he pointed out in the distance and Midoriya was the only person that was able to understand All Might's message by the end by saying you're next, and the idea that the torch has now been passed for the next great hero. Even All For One pointed that out in telling All Might during their battle, you were the one that passed on all of your powers to Midoriya, I know you have nothing left. Which to that extent, I really did enjoy how the animation felt so fluid, the artistic style, the music, everything about this fight between All Might and All For One felt absolutely one-sided, especially early on in the first and second acts of the episode because we see how All For One is able to use multiple quirks and being able to modify his body, even so much so to where I thought there was a certain scene where it personally reminded me of corrupted Zamasu from Dragon Ball Super when All Might was basically going up against All For One who was mutating his body and even going as far enough as to basically taunt All Might in the fact that he killed his master and that how All Might has nothing left and I loved how even during the mutation stage as we get to see how All For One was just looking to simply get his revenge and killing All Might I really did enjoy the dynamic for All For One because he came across as a very sinister villain, someone who seemed very believable in the fact that he wasn't only destroying the entire city just to destroy it, but he wanted to personally inflict as much damage, as much physical and emotional damage to All Might as he possibly could before finishing All Might off in the end. And everyone, Bakugo, Midoriya, Koda, everyone was watching on the sidelines as this battle was basically coming to a close, and I really did enjoy how All For One basically had told All Might, I will punch you with the ultimate combination of quirks that I have gathered right now. The ultimate power that has no limit, which really goes to show how badass of a villain All For One actually is, which is a real testament to his power because once we see All Might basically tired down, he's worn out, All For One goes on to make the statement and saying, I'm certainly confident that after exchanging blows with you All Might, the one for all power no longer dwells inside you, making All Might very vulnerable. And this 
this episode almost felt like All Might was going to lose. And I really think that's what this episode needed is the fact that All Might was basically pushed beyond his limit, in which by the very end we get to see how he uses the United States of Smash Attack in just completely decimating All For One, which to me, I personally thought it was kind of early to get rid of All For One that quickly. And I understand that even by the end, he's still alive, which is a good thing because I'm hoping to see more from All For One in the future. But I did not personally like how this fight ended so quickly because you could have gotten more substance from this battle and I understand that there's only so much you can do involving said characters because personally to me this reminded me of Goku versus Frieza, Saitama versus Borgos. This is what it brought me to and I really did enjoy how even by the end as All Might is pushing back the attack power of All For One, his arms are starting to bleed. He can hear the people all around him cry out All Might, All Might and that set up All Might in basically using his right hand as bait and moving on over and switching his powers to his left hand which he was able to directly get a good enough punch in actually executing a left hook to the face of All For One but by the end it was his willpower of reminiscing back to his master, his willpower of protecting Midoriya, his courage and willpower to continue on using that flame that was dying inside of him and finally doing what he was set out to do in becoming the hero that the world needed and finally defeating All For One. Now, now, the question begs, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here in terms of All Might having to permanently finish his training with Midoriya? Where do we go from here in terms of All For One's character? Is he somehow going to return? Are we going to see another villain appear in trying to take All For One's place? I, for one, feel like All For One will definitely return in the future because by the end of this battle, it was just too good for them not to bring him back. And I really do enjoy the history that these two have because even by the end, after All Might had nothing left within him, he went on to state as I quote, this power has been entrusted to the next generation by many people, praying that it would work for the good of all, that all of their hopes would become one, as now it is your turn to do your best. As we see All Might's master hand down that power, as he finally executed and utilizing the United States punch, which was absolutely crazy when looking at the velocity and the sheer force, the depth and magnitude of that United States of Smash was just too crazy. It literally shook the entire city and everything that All Might had within him had basically worn off because he had nothing left. And I really did enjoy how by the end, All Might basically did the WWE traditional Undertaker pose by lifting up his left arm. As I thought that was a really cool little wrestling reference in my opinion, looking at it from a wrestling point of view. But by the end, you can clearly see the message that All Might was trying to give off, which wasn't only towards the world in a allowing them to feel safe again and giving them hope to live on, but also pointing the finger and saying you're next, signifying that it's Midoriya's turn, which Midoriya immediately recognized because as soon as he looked up on the screen, he started to cry, he started to sob, and Bakugo is looking at him like, I know, I know exactly what this means. He had no emotion, but the world, the entire world did as they're cheering this man on, and they accepted him, which was one of All Might's biggest fears ever since episode one, in me meeting Midoriya for the first time and letting him know, listen kid, nobody else knows about this. Nobody else knows who I really am. Nobody else could possibly understand what I am. And now that the entire world has basically seen the real All Might, what I really did enjoy is how they accepted him because in the beginning when they first saw him, the entire world was ridiculing and saying, who is that skinny guy? That can't be All Might. Where is All Might? Which finally after they had realized, damn, that right there is All Might. That person person is just like all of us. They've accepted him. They've accepted him with open arms. And even while he was bloody, even while he was beaten, having to realize that this person all for one was going to destroy not only the entire city, but potentially the entire world. He gave it his all even after breaking his arms, even after feeling that pain and being backed into a corner. He did everything he could as a person, as a hero figure to not only stand his ground, but overcome the obstacle that was placed in front of him, which personally, I hope this is not the end of All For One. I really hope to see more of him, but in the end, let me know your thoughts down below. What did you guys think about My Hero Academia Season 3, Episode 49? What are your thoughts on All For One? What are your thoughts on All Might basically having no power, basically having nothing left within him, but still having the courage and the willpower to continue the fight even after
after realizing that he had nothing left. What are your thoughts on the idea of them having to use flashbacks and going back to the Shigaraki speech and seeing how everything basically connected ever since the first episode of My Hero Academia? Post your comments down below, guys. Thank you all so much for watching this episode easily easily 10 out of 10 if you really stop to look at the context of how this fight went down and the way this episode was portrayed in seeing how all for one was mocking all might and saying where is your smile huh where is your master the very person i ended up killing where is your faith now where is your power now all might it really goes as far as bringing in real emotions for you to connect to all the characters presented which to me makes for a very interesting episode especially for me when i saw all for one basically mock all might in saying well where is her smile where is the smile that you know from your master that's what really triggered all might in my opinion but by the end guys let me know your thoughts down below thank you all so much for watching guys once again if you guys want me to cover more my hero academia content on this channel please let me know in the comment section below the more support we get on this channel the more likely it is for me to cover my hero academia in the future so let me know your thoughts down below guys if you guys are new to this channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button guys turn on all notifications tune back in for more check out the official my hero academia playlist down below and i'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below take it easy everybody cue my motherfucking outro bitch